All right. Uh, hello and welcome to Gotham Sound TV. Uh, good afternoon to Europe. Good afternoon. Andrew Jones from Deity is with us. Andrew, how are you? I am doing wonderful. We're having a great time here at IBC. The weather is beautiful. And I'll tell you, the people we're meeting out here at the trade show are some of the nicest folks you can talk to. You know, there's so much exciting, cool stuff going on uh, at IBC and in particular, Andrew, with Deity. So, uh, look, just a word about sound. Um, Andrew's on in the middle of a uh, talk show, uh, a show floor, and we are uh, using Zoom. But, you know, I just wanted to get this news and get this info. So, Andrew, what do you got? So we launched seven new products here at IBC this week. Uh, they'll be trickling out over the next couple of months. We also were showing off the final production units of the PR2. This hasn't been forgotten about. I know a lot of people are asking all the time for updates on that. So on the show floor, we have the final production unit of the PR2 here for people to check out. We launched a brand new Limo 3-pin transmitter for the Theos ecosystem here. We also launched a... Uh, dual bay docking the smart dock uh, for smart batteries uh, that also uh, has some docking capabilities if I can do this correctly here live it's always it's always when people are watching you that you're like oh how do these work together that docks together and cascades power you can connect up the three of these we also launched a brand new uh, butterfly antenna the deity butterfly and then behind me I've got four XLR mics We've got a hyper a cardioid a super cardioid short, and of course, our long classic super cardioid too as well. I think for me, let's start with the Limo transmitter. Let's start right at the right at the right top. Here. So here I've got our new brand new Limo transmitter. As we can see, three pin Limo. We're working on making it so that it's compatible with multiple Limo configurations that are out there. Right now, it's wired up. Uh, it's wired up for like um, uh, one way. But what we want to do is add it so that it's compatible with all the different ways that Limo can be wired for a body pack transmitter. So that if you're out there with a lavalier that's compatible one direction and you want to still use it, you could still use it. So we're trying to make it as compatible out there with the gear that you already own. So we're not having to create e-waste and have people sit there saying, oh, stuff has to go sit in my closet just so I can use the new deity stuff. The other cool thing about it is... With two AA batteries, we're able to get 50 milliwatts, uh, transmit and record here in Europe, as well as time code. With 48 volts, with the lithiums, we're getting eight hours of battery life. I'm trying to make sure, like, I make sure I say everything for for max power consumption that we're running in order to get that eight hours battery life. So, so, so that eight hours is with phantom power turned on. Phantom power on. Record and transmit here in Europe, 50 milliwatts. We're still getting eight hours of battery life. Amazing. And this is completely different. This is a different modulation than the 2.4 gig. This is its own. This is yeah. So this is our Theos ecosystem. We're adding to it. And like I said, a lot of stuff is going to be coming to that Theos ecosystem. You're going to see us every six months adding new products. It's our, it's our future. It's our baby. We know this is a growth item that you guys in the community are asking us to make. So people said, hey, we want to see a body pack that also offers 3-pin Limo, also does Phantom, and that's what we developed. Now, uh, we're getting a lot of comments in, Andrew. So first of all, okay. Andrew Jones with no hat and sport coat. Um, yes, that's, it's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, and so now <laughs> you're a grown up. That's right. Um, so complete transmit control via app. Um, and you know, yeah, like I think a lot of people are excited about that. Tell, tell us about that, please. Yeah. So the Citus audio app that we have for time code, the same thing that controls your TC ones and your TC SO ones, it's going to pair to the Theo systems. Just like you normally would with all your devices, you would pair all up. And now that little section down at the bottom that says workstations that kind of was being ignored in the past, it was already there set up for this kind of stuff. So now when you click over to workstation mode, 
you're going to see the first menu. It's all your wireless. You're going to see all your transmitters, VU symbols all on one page. Then you're going to see at the very top a tab that says record. And you're going to see all the devices that are enabled to allow recording. You can hit the top record button. You could trigger every single recorder on your film set all at once. So here in Europe, their transmit record functionality will continue. For folks in the U.S., if you hit record all, all of your DBTX and DLTXs will stop transmitting and your PR2s and DLTXs will all just start recording. But you'll have those backup files ready in case you're in a situation where RF is a little rough. And then that last tab is going to be all your time codes. So you can do a sync for time code across your whole ecosystem on your film set. And again, with Citus Audio, we've always said from the beginning, you can pair up the 20 devices. And we were always making sure we never said TC once or TCSO once. It was always 20 devices because these were coming. So your whole film set will be one app to control everything. Um, uh, amazing. And TK, um, you know, from our Atlanta office, um, also made some notes for me that uh, there's some cool stuff going on. Like you can, uh, you can make it vibrate remotely, uh, right? So it vibrates on record. Uh, it can vibrate if you, if you, you know, if it's lost and you need to find it. Yeah. So we're going to make it so that if you say, uh, left it hair and makeup, right? Someone leaves it on a countertop or a table, make it vibrate so you can go and find it and you hear the vibration. Someone in our community was even saying, oh, what if it could vibrate if it's got low battery? To let the actor know to go tell someone my battery is low in case someone isn't monitoring the app at that moment. And it was like, yeah, that's brilliant. Let's add that. So we can add via firmware a lot of this stuff that is not set hardware. It's encoded to be digitally switched one way or another through the app process. And Andrew, normally I reserve my half-baked ideas for, uh, in private, um, but you could also cue an actor like if you have an Absolutely. yeah yeah like for an entrance you can silently cue them or something like that you could easily cue them or you could throw them off their game in the middle of a comedy <laughs> sketch for a prank why not <laughs> <Yeah>. yes <laughs> i don't know what's <laughs> happening uh yeah maybe we can get electrodes too so that we can give them a little shock possibly uh, about like a little tins unit it could also be a massager that, that's right um uh, muscles put on the shoulder <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, um, we have a request for a close-up. So here we go. Here's the top side. As you can see, we've got the exact same thickness as the other transmitter, 18 millimeters. So it's coming in super thin. That Limo connector is right there. It is a twist lock Limo. So it's a Limo branded Limo first and foremost. That's why we're not trying to dance around the name. We're using real Limo parts here and that will twist on with your lavaliers or you can use a push pull if that's what you favor. Uh, the SMA is on the opposite side. Here you can see the buttons are all sealed up behind that battery door. So if I were to close the battery door, buttons are not going to get pushed once they're put into someone's pocket. Here on the other side, something that often is kind of, we 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 take it for granted because we've had it since the 2.4 days, but our transmitters all have headphone jacks on them. The reason being is if you send out a utility to go wire someone up, they could bring a pair of headphones with them give it a quick listen, do a mic check without having to go over walkie and disturb the sound mixer who may be doing a lot of other things on, on the set. There's a lot of things that can go on and we can streamline those processes and offboard it to very capable people. We can always help each other out. You know, three man sound team. There's a lot of things that need to get done before the first shoot. Yeah. It's a, it's a great feature. And even like uh, if you're giving it to a wardrobe person, you know, now they're, they are completely independent. They can listen to it. Uh, no, I think, I think the headphone out is clutch. Um, we have, uh, yes, people are loving the group record and cut. And, um, Martin is saying 550 to 990 range, which, um, yep. if I, if I missed that when you said it, yeah, that's a huge, that's a huge range. Uh Oh, you guys, uh -oh. you're going to get 550 to 608. You're even going to get the 612, the 614, that little sliver. But, hey, it's a great sliver. Of course, you're going to get the duplex cap, 550, sorry, 653, the 663. And then we also give the ISF band, which is 902, the 928. So if you're not familiar with those two last bands, the duplex cap and the ISM band, 
Uh, they can be very clean bands to be operating in. I know a lot of folks in the U.S. are asking us, uh, why not 470, the, you know, below 550? And our answer in response to that for the U.S. is that's more TV band. That's more congestion and more really rough traffic, especially if you're in New York and L.A. Those it's practically unusable. Uh, you can get a couple of transmitters in there, but the 26 megahertz in ISM is usually pretty clean. You can get more up from there. And the range that you lose by going higher in the frequency is just minor in comparison to the signal to noise ratio you're now able to achieve, which makes up often for the physics of the higher frequency. Yeah, I think it's I think it's incredible. And then Whitney asks, how close can you stack frequencies apart? What is yeah, what is coordination like? So uh, you can actually space the frequencies because it's digitally modulated. Technically, we're intermod free, right? Which if you're evenly spacing out your frequencies, you shouldn't give yourself your own problems. So spacing with us is 700 kilohertz. And for things like the duplex gap, uh, which is an RF desert of 10 megahertz, we can hit 14 transmitters in that space. Wow. Wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's, um, that's amazing. Um, okay. So we got some more questions, um, on the receiver, uh, is there a headphone jack and, and therefore can it be used as a, as an IFB receiver? Of course. So what we have there is we have the A and the B and you'll notice I didn't call it channel one, channel two, because those are routable outputs. The A we can do output one, or we can do, uh, both left and right. So like if you're going into a mirrorless or DSLR camera, we can do that as well. So transmitter one and two can go down A. And then on B, you can set that up for headphone jack and it mirrors whatever's going out on A. So if it's just trans uh, channel one going out on A, your headphone mirror will be identical to that as well. So that would be kind of your classic IFB setup. Uh, that's That's amazing. That's great. Um, and then a question about the maximum SPL, uh, I believe on the transmitter input, um, you know, can it be compatible with D DPA, um, which so, I assume so let's, let's break it down into the two different questions there. Uh, it is a 32 bit float preamplifier. So max SPL for us is for all intents and purposes, whatever your lavalier is. Uh, the dynamic range, though, I think we're limited to like 132 is what we claim because of the recording module and the way we do our gain structuring. Uh, unlike a lot of 32-bit float that are full automatic, that kind of they set and forget kind of gain structure, we allow you to adjust the gain in our 32-bit float. And that allows us to get a very low self-noise mm -hmm. of 130 dBU. So incredibly clean self noise. So you're able to dial that in to your lavalier. And then in terms of your lavaliers, if you want to use a DPA, first, my heart will be broken because you should use a deity. But if you want to use a DPA, we do have five volt bias for those higher power lavaliers that have that sweet spot. We also have a three volt bias if you're on the Sennheiser standard or if you want to use a deity lavalier as well. And that so I, assume, I assume that's menu selectable. Uh, yeah. Say that again. The bias voltage is selectable in the menu of the transmitter? Yeah. Great. So yeah, so you're on the newer transmitter with the Limo, we have line 3, 5, and 48. And then on the 3.5 millimeter base model transmitter, it's just a line 3 and 5. Got it. Got it. That's good. Cool. Yeah. Uh, okay, so a couple of more questions. Uh <laughs> uh, any future plans? I know you just announced these products uh, and are coming out, but future plans for a rack or super slot, something like that. We've, we've got plans for what we'll just politely call a pro receiver. Uh, what the ergonomics of that are, are I'm not going to lie. They're being internally debated every other day. Uh, I think everyone has their own opinions, their own regions, their own needs uh but know that we are listening to community feedback as to what they want in a top down pro receiver um so that is coming not tomorrow so if you're like i pre-ordered my theos i'm gonna cancel and wait 
uh, you'll get the life of your Theos until that comes out. And then, of course, like we talked about earlier, you can always turn that DR2X, uh, the D2X RX to a camera hopper, an IFB type device. So it's not just like you're you're up a creek, you know, it's it's you're going to grow with this ecosystem and handle it. Because, again, that wide bandwidth, you could always put those up in the 900s in your pro receiver down in TV band if you want. Yeah. But that is all. Yeah. Um, and then just to take care of some business, Theos shipping soon. And what are the price points, uh, you know, uh, list price? Sure. Uh, shipping here in Europe is going to be about mid October for North America. It's end of October, uh, for price points, you can pick it up at Gotham sound, uh, for 1090. And then we also have a single channel that Gotham sounds put together for you folks out there who maybe want to just try before you buy and fully commit. You can get a single channel from Gotham on their website. I think that's six ninety nine. And is that that? Thank you for that. And does that include the new the new transmitter? No. So that's the the, the DBTX. That's what the two channel kit is. Uh, the new transmitter price isn't set, but that'll be a solo kind of item where you'll call up someone like Gotham and to have them put together a kit for you uh, in terms of a quote. So they're like a classic system you'd buy from another wireless brand. You're buying your transmitters and your receivers separately. And you piecemeal what you need for your desire in your kit. Awesome. Uh, we And we do have a request for uh, a micro-sized transmitter. I'm sure that's not the first request you've heard. I mean, a micro-transmitter is really cool. Uh, it's not unheard of. <laughs> uh, but I think it's probably not going to be in the next 12 months. Uh, only because... A lot of people are asking for those pro receivers and those IFBs. And I think that's going to be probably our priority internal to move on those as quick as possible to support uh, the folks out there who have really wanted a new IFB system. Uh, excellent. All right. I think um, let's use our, our remaining time uh, for the other products. Um, I know people, you know, love the antenna. I mean, there's so much. So, yeah, there's the antenna. Yeah, it looks great. So this is the Deity Butterfly butterfly antenna. Uh, it's a classic butterfly. Uh, it starts at 470, goes up to one gigahertz. Uh, I know uh, we on a personal level for wireless do not enjoy the 470. We believe in the higher. Uh, we know a lot of you folks out there have it. And we wanted to support you guys because that's what you asked for. So we made the antenna do full spectrum. Uh, it goes all the way up to one gigahertz so even if you have above what we offer which is the the 928 if you have anything in that 940 band it'll still work um so if you've got some of those 940 transmitters from other brands you're covered as well and what's great about a butterfly antenna like this if you're not too familiar with the design it allows you to do wide band so i can put transmitters and receivers uh you know down in 470 and I can do a antenna combiner, and I can have another set in 600. I can have another set in 900. And I'm not having to switch out different antennas, run multiple antennas. The wideband aspect of this can cover all the ranges equally and offer just a little bit of bump and gain. So when you hit that splitter, you're not losing too much attenuation on your split. Its, it's pattern is like a dipole. Is that is that right? Like a donut? Yeah. Yeah, it's an omnidirectional. It's like a dipole. The butterfly, the bow tie, they're all kind of the same. They're all, uh, I think it's called con, con, oh, it's a C word. It's very hard, Latin. Like, I speak a lot of Latin in my life. <laughs> I just call um, it donut, but yeah. <laughs> it's a donut. Yeah. And what allows you to do is the top side is, of course, the aerial, the bottom side is the ground plane. But what that allows you to do is remote your omnidirectional antennas on a mast, or if you need to do something like a zone setup where you have a shark fin and then an omni, you can, of course, do your diversity there as well. Yeah, excellent. All right, I want to, uh, before we run out of time, we've had some requests to see some of the other products, uh, specifically sure. the charger. Right here. So this is our two-bay smart charger compatible with all smart batteries on the market. Uh, it's got LED meters on either side, so you can get individual charging levels. Just like our DQC1, it's got the four LEDs that will bl uh, blink uh, according to what the charge rate is. On the back side, you'll notice it's kind of different. Uh, it's USB-C. Each one of these is 50 watts. 
for a combined total of 100 watts. So the idea for that is instead of putting a bunch of smart electronics in here so you can tell it, I want to slow charge or I want to fast charge my batteries, you could either just physically connect it. By doing that, we're able to reduce the cost and make this a lot more affordable for you, the end user. So if all you're doing is trickle charge overnight and you want to slow charge your batteries, just plug in one. If you're needing something in the next two hours, plug in both. And it's not that the each USB-C is only good for one battery. It's just the amount of current that both battery chargers will get. Right. Right. Uh, so it'll do both. And you'll notice there's some pogo pins on either side. These can dock together and cascade power. So if you are short in your hotel room on a travel gig, you need to start setting up a charging station in your hotel room and you're short on plugs, you could always cascade these together and just run off one or two over like on a little wall circuit. Andrew, it's like you've done this work before and you're making products <laughs> that you wish you had. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we took all the fancy items out, like the screens and calibrations, all that stuff. We're like, if you own a smart battery, you should own an SPD-1. You should buy that from Gotham. And then you could always use your SPD-1 for all of the data and telemetry data. You're just charging a battery. Give it a little three blinks. That's a really reliable technology <laughs> built into your charger. So there's less to go wrong with something that is really a utility tool that you need to rely on for your job. Uh, awesome. Um, and uh, price and availability on that? Availability, I'm told this is actually like uh, probably like 95% done. So availability should be as quick as we can get them out. Uh, price, I'm just going to say the Deity uh, classic line of we're Deity microphones and we're here to make you happy. <laughs> That's a good price. That's a great price. Um, <laughs> all right. And, the, and lastly, I think, are the microphones that you guys have announced. Yeah. So let's go take a look at them. Sure. So over here, we're five years ago, actually, Gotham showed up in our booth at NAB. 2028 because they heard we made a really good shotgun but that was five years ago and the problem with that shotgun is it was very heavy it's not the lightest of shotguns i've run over one with my car in a youtube video to show off how strong our shotgun microphones are but you the community has been like that's cool andrew but i need it very light on my boom pole so what we did was it's a refresh of our lineup this is the s mic 3 and it, it sounds relatively identical to the original. The big difference is it's 60% lighter. Uh, it now weighs, I think, 80 grams uh, in terms of lightness. It's incredibly light. So we want to make an incredibly good directional, very low noise, 12 dBA weight uh, for self-noise. It's still got the same negative 18 db off axis rejection as our old models so it's very focused it still has the same classic 45 degree cone on the open side so it's easy to boom especially for reality tv or if you're doing an improv comedy shoot where either actor could immediately jump on a line so it's got all those great characteristics of the old mic but now it's much easier to boom for those longer days and to extend that the 3S also got a little lift, and it's also significantly lighter. So that's going to still be a great microphone for those indoor interviews uh, where you're having the running gun or throw it on a camera for reference audio. But this is the one that's kind of been a lot of people have been asking about, the 3H. And this is a tiny little hypercardioid, as you can see. And it's got a little wind muff on there with a little rubber gasket to help it make you know, make sure it stays on there so it doesn't fall off in the middle of your scene. So often with these little pencil mics, uh, I'll see boom operators got some rubber bands holding it on there and they've got tape <laughs> it all on. And I'm like, that's fantastic. But as a manufacturer, if I can solve it from the beginning, I'll try to do that. So we've got a nice little rubber <laughs> gasket, just like you would with some kind of wind muff, but we just did it with a foam. Uh, that's great. And what a great, what a great lineup. What a great size. Uh, and yeah. then we, of course, have the cardioid. Uh-huh. And so, what, do, what are you looking for? Well, sorry, what are you looking for in terms of availability and price on that? Uh, availability and price.